of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Here's Ladies Jimmy Lennon. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the world's largest hotel, casino, and theme park, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. As we have a big night of action coming away, and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision. In association with Showtime Event Television, Corona, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and the MGM Grand. At this time, we present the IBF Junior Flyweight World Championship, sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. The President, Robert Lee Sr., Supervisor, Daryl Peoples, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The Chairman is Dr. James Nave. Introducing to you our judges for this bout, Bill Graham, Tom McDonough, and Dave Moretti. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing white trunks with red trim. He is fighting out of and representing his hometown of Phoenix, Arizona. He weighed in at a ready 107 pounds with a professional record of 39 wins, two losses. He has 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the 1988 Olympic silver medalist and three-time world champion in the 108-pound division, currently ranked the number two IBF junior flyweight contender, introducing Manitas de Piedra, Michael. his opponent across the ring on my left fighting out of the red corner he is wearing blue trunks with gold trim hailing from china campeche mexico he weighed in the same as his opponent 107 pounds his record includes 45 wins four losses and four draws with 19 wins coming by way of knockout here is the former WBC light flyweight champion of the world and the current IBF number one rank contender, introducing Melchor Castro. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay Nady, now to give instructions. Do we have any questions? We have 12 rounds. This is for the IBF championship of the world. I want a good, clean fight. When I take a break, I want you to step back cleanly. Obey my commands and defend yourself at all times. Let's go to work. Brief but important instructions from Jane A to the referee. This is the 12 round vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. That's the 108 pound division. You're looking at Michael Carbajal, the former champion, currently ranked number two in the IBF with a record of 39 and 2, 25 KOs from Phoenix, Arizona. He's more experienced in world title fights than 1988 silver medalist in the Olympic Games, taking on a guy that's actually got more career rounds. 431 career rounds to 236 for Michael Carbajal. Carbajal in white, Cobb Castro in the blue trunks. You notice immediately as you see Cobb Castro pounding away with the right hand out in front of him that he's a southpaw. And that's an important thing to uh, uh, pick up in the early going because the next thing we want to watch is the front feet and see if they start getting uh, tied up if uh, Carbajal will uh, step on him. Remember, it's Carbajal that has the power. Castro has the quickness and will able to and try to stay away from him. This terrific fighter from China in Campeche in Mexico is a terrific little fighter. Cabo Hall has more experience in the world title fights and that's what she's all about at this level. They're fighting for the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World, the 108 pound division. This is a terrific night of boxing because we get to see the little guys in this one and again in the uh, 12 round WBC Strawweight Championship and they're even smaller than this. So we go from the small to the huge. Frank Bruno weighed in at 247 pounds. Wow. 
what a night this is going to be before it's all over. And I tell you this, when we get closer to the Bruno fight, you'll hear the Brits and Force cheering. You'll hear the old chants, just like you would if you were at uh, Old Trafford for the uh, great soccer games that are played up there for the great Manchester United team in the red and white. But right now in the red and white, the guy wearing the white trunks with the red trim is Michael Carbajal. And his white and red means that he wants to take out the guy in the blue and gold, and he's got a tall order in front of him tonight. Round number one stop, continues stop. to see Cabo Hall come up. He's a tough street brother type of guy. Knows what he wants to do. Trying to keep that left hand in the face of the Cobb Castro. Castro actually ranked higher than is uh, Cabo Hall, although Cabo Hall's waltz through uh, several world title fights in his career. He's a former champ, as you know. Look at this time, the crowd not too uh, pleased because both of them are such uh, tacticians in the ring that they uh, would like to see uh, a little bit more of a mix-up in there. But this is the strategy of uh, Cobb Castro uh, to just continually show movement, show movement, show movement, hit and don't get hit, come in, duck, bob away, circle to his right, back to his left, throw out the hand, duck underneath the left hand of Carbajal, just make Carbajal miss, keep moving, sliding away, continues to slide, and that's all he does. And every once in a while, he'll come and engage like that, and Carbajal will back off. So it's not what you call uh, the classic boxing match that people like to see. But believe me, this won't end in a decision. This thing will go with a knockout route, and it'll probably be off the right hand of Michael Carbajal. Welcome back to round number two of the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. The principals in the ring in the white trunks, Michael Carbajal, ranked number two in the IBF, taking on Melchor Cobb Castro, ranked number one in the IBF of this 108-pound division. I'm your host for tonight's night of boxing action. I'm Bob Sheridan. Glad that you can be with us. Wherever you're watching in the four corners of the globe, it's a pleasure to have you right here with me in the Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the beautiful MGM Grand Garden. We are pleased to have you with us. This is round two in the first round. Sort of a feeling out round for both fighters. It's uh, Cabo Hall, the aggressor, and uh, Cobb Castro, the guy in the blue trunks, taking his opportunities to attack when he wants to. It's a, an even fight to this point and uh, kind of a lackluster fight because of the way the styles are really uh, uh, very similar in a lot of ways in that they uh, hit and don't get hit. They hit and move. And uh, I think you'll see the action pick up and it'll be fast and furious before it's over, though. These guys at this weight are usually much busier than this. And a lot of strategy going through the minds of these fighters right now. And you wonder with uh, Ignacio Beristan, who was able to engineer the upsets of uh, Chiquita Gonzalez, uh, that you know that... Uh, uh, but one thing is for sure that Cup Castro is ready for Cabo Hall. Don't hold, don't this hold. is a tough fight for both guys. And Jay Nady telling the fighters, hey, you can't hold, hang on, and hit. Coming up to the halfway mark here in round number two of this our first world telecast and first world championship fight on this world telecast tonight. And we've got five of them for you. So sit right where you are. <laughs> When we get closer to that uh, championship fight for the WBC heavyweight championship fight, we'll be telling you to lock up your children and tie up your dogs and throw the feet up, crack open a Foster's down in Australia and get ready for a night of boxing. But right now, uh, these little guys are what we've got for you, and uh, they better pick up the pace of the crowd. He's going to start chanting, and they won't like the chants they hear. There we go with Cabo Hall uh, getting a little bit busier now, and that's what it's going to take. Castro's going to continue to fight just like this all night because that's his style. He's a counter puncher. He's a guy that backs up and he picks his shots. And that's exactly what he's doing. So he's dictating the way he wants to fight. And you see when Pub Castro puts his head down like that and swings, that's when uh, Cabo Hall has got to clip him with a left hook and then follow it up with a right hand. A big difference in height here, and uh, Cabo Hall is trying to use it to his advantage. And it will be an advantage as the night progresses. He's just not right in the proper artillery range yet, but when he gets there, he'll start bouncing the uh, leather off the forehead of this guy. See the left hook right there? That's what it'll uh, come off of. It'll start with a left hook, because he can hook with that left hand. He can go to the body with a left hand. He can bang him underneath the ribs with that left hand. And Castro really has to struggle to reach him with his left hand. Again, Castro's a southpaw with a right foot out in front and jabbing with the right hand. You see how wild he is? So, Cabo Hall's got some nice quickness, too. 
All right, here we go. This is round number three. Bob Sheridan here on King Vision. We're coming to you live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. A big night of boxing ahead of us, and of course, everybody wants to see Mike Tyson. It's amazing what's happened to Mike Tyson uh, out here. I thought he was kind of upstaged uh, at the weigh-in. Uh, Frank Bruno wearing the sunglasses, so Mike couldn't take his spirit away with his eyes. And then there were about five or 600 uh, uh, British people on hand to cheer and rant and rave and sing and uh, uh, really make a show. And I think Mike uh, was kind of surprised by all that. But both guys looked in tremendous condition, as we know they are. Uh, but right now, we're talking about this fight that's in front of us here, Michael Carbajal. Former two-time champ to the left of your screen now, uh, kind of with his back to you a little bit, still to the left of the screen. To the right, a guy by the name of Melcher Cobb Castro, who's no stranger to the people down in China, in Campeche, in Mexico. All you people down in Mexico that are taking this feed in English, uh, say hello to my good friends in Campeche, and uh, why don't you just send some of those you sick shrimps up to me in Boston. <laughs> Some of the finest shrimp fishing in the world Break. down in the Campeche area in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's where Cobb Castro hails from. He's fighting a shrimp in front of him tonight, a guy by the name of Miguel Cabal, and that's all the shrimp he wants tonight. He'd love to take him out. Campeche is the shrimp capital of the world. We're in round number three. This is scheduled for 12, the championship distance. Hasn't been a classic fight yet, but there's been times when both guys have shown a bit of brilliance. More of the brawler type is caught Castro. 45 and 4 with four draws on his record. Tough little cookie from down in the nice weather area of Mexico. Michael Cabo, you speak of nice weather. I was in Phoenix last week and uh, we had a terrific time there covering uh, what is called baseball in the United States of America. They were training for the regular season to start and uh, Carbajal very very popular in his home area and there'll be probably a couple thousand people up here that follow him wherever he fights whether it be in Vegas or Phoenix or wherever he would fight uh, they're pretty loyal fans and there was put a bit of chat about Carbajal in Phoenix they like to see him spend more time and they like to see him fight more down there he was supposed to be in that crowd that we had before the American Super Bowl down there in uh, the 27th of January this year. But uh, for some reason, he had to pull out of that fight, and he's thrilled to be on this fight uh, card against um, Mike Tyson. You can hardly talk about the record of uh, uh, Michael Carbajal without mentioning the fact that in 1995, he uh, fought six times. He won all six fights, five of them by KO. Frank, stop punching. Closing seconds now of the third. And the bell. About 6.30 Western time in the United States. I'd love to see uh, those gentlemen about uh, 6.30 in the morning because they'll still be up, especially if Frank Bruno wins it. All right, this is round number four of a world title fight in its own right. These are the little guys of boxing, the junior flyweights of the IBF battling for the vacant IBF junior flyweight championship of the world. That's a 108-pound division. The guy in white, Michael Carvajal, the fellow in the blue trunks with the gold trim, a Melchor. Comp Castro of Mexico, a veteran uh, of the ring wars for many, many years, Cobb Castro, and it's a tough fight so far for both of these guys. I have Carbajal slightly out in front, but based mostly uh, on aggressiveness as Cobb Castro lands a few punches here in the fourth round. Nobody's been down, nobody's shaken, a little bit of puffiness around the eyes of uh, Cobb Castro, but other than that, it's uh, uh, nothing significant to report at this stage see as well as I can the every once in a while the front feet get tied up you saw Cobb Castro just step on the foot and then uh, Carbajal come back and hook into the leg of uh, Cobb Castro and that's what happens when you have a southpaw fighting a guy with the orthodox style it's no problem for Carbajal because he's fought several southpaws in his career and has been very very successful the only person that's caused him any problem in his career really has been Chiquita Gonzalez and uh, he's certainly a great world champion one of the great fighters of all time in this division so you can hardly knock him for that and by the way two of the losses of the four for Cobb Castro have also come at the hands of Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez as well. Junior flyweights 108 pounds a lot of guys from Thailand Korea 
South Africa, Venezuela, Panama, that's where they hail from. We don't know a lot about them. We had a chance to see uh, Carlos Marulo uh, a few months ago here on King Vision. But uh, I tell you what, it sounds like Don King wants to take the show on the road. So we could be going any place from South Africa to the Philippines to all the, uh, the Koreans that die to have Mike Tyson. Uh, the uh, people in Thailand and Singapore would love it if Cabo Hall or one of the other little guys and uh, Ricardo Lopez, who you'll see in a little while if we go down and fight in Thailand. I mentioned earlier uh, across the Middle East, they'd love to get a fight in Dubai and the United Arab uh, Emirates that all of these countries watching tonight. And the word from Don King is that we may be coming to many of those places uh, to do battle. So hopefully you'll have the opportunity. I know that the uh, television that we're going to down in Zambia and South Africa tonight uh, definitely want to see uh, the heavyweight champion of the IBF, a fellow by the name of Francois Boda, defend his title down in South Africa. So hopefully we'll get down to Sun City or perhaps in Johannesburg. And uh, uh, we'll look forward to... Uh I can say he doesn't look like he has much power, but you heard what they said in Cabo Hall's corner. Don't get careless with this guy. All he wants to do is run around and avoid you, if not hang on inside. Uh, he's finding a strategic fight that he should be fighting, by the way, folks. It doesn't make for a beautiful fight to describe, and I'm sure not for a great fight to watch wherever you're watching around the world. But uh, uh, these guys have a strategy that they want to execute, and it's working, I would say, uh, most favorably for Cabo Hall at this stage. I've got him ahead 40-37 after four rounds. We're in the fifth round of the scheduled 12-round fight. The judges, by the way, that will be scoring this fight are Bill Graham of Las Vegas, Nevada, Tom McDonough of Tacoma, Washington, and Dave Moretti of Las Vegas. Movie actor John Candy, uh, when I see that fellow Tom McDonough of Tacoma, if you ever saw around the world, my late friend John Candy, Passed away a few years ago. What a great actor he was. But uh, the time he played Tom Tuttle of Tacoma comes to mind with all of the fantastic celebrities that are on hand here tonight, including people like Drew Barrymore and Lauren Holly, Don Johnson, my good pal Chris Christopherson, who did color with me on the alley fight uh, a few years ago. Eddie Murphy here. You saw Jack Nicholson. And you'll be seeing all these people as they continue to come in. Uh, many of you uh, will not know some of these stars because a lot of them are American TV stars that you don't see, but you'll know people like, uh, oh, Snoop Doggy Dog and uh, Christian Slater and uh, perhaps uh, Damon Wayans and uh, Paul Rodriguez and maybe Roseanne and Ricky Henderson and Lou Gossett Jr. and on and on and on the celebrity list goes. Right now we're in the fifth round of the Michael Cabajal fight against Melchick Cobb Castro. It's a tough, brutal war inside the ring for these guys, but it's not exactly what you would call a big crowd-pleasing fight for the people that are on hand here. That time, Cabajal has the bounce away and does a nice job uh, avoiding the shots of the uh, trying to get more aggressive and swimming wild with his punching style called Castro. Let go, let go, let go. The anticipation and uh, excitement continues to mount. You watch this fight, and uh, when it's not exciting, and you get a lull, the crowd is saying, how do you get over with this? Uh, the crowd get excited with Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson. Don't hold, don't hold. Can't wait. I'll tell you one thing. The fight after this one, you're going to see Christine Martin against Deirdre Gogarty, and this oh, go, fight, go. I will promise you, do not leave your seats. It will be very, very exciting. And yes, I said Christy Martin and Deirdre Gogarty, those of you who have not seen women boxing, these are consummate professionals, and they fight better than men do in a lot of cases. And you'll love it, and I guarantee you, it'll be a crowd. All right, here we go. This is round number six, scheduled for 12. It's the IBF, the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. Hasn't been kind of what we expected to this point. Uh, not a great fight, but uh, it's not because the boys aren't working hard enough. It's because their styles, again, are so similar, uh, and nothing explosive has happened. Nobody cut, nobody down, nobody staggered, nobody hurt, and that doesn't make for a crowd pleaser. 
But as Great we continue to talk and this uh, fight continues to unfold, again, I'll promise you that the next fight will be very, very action-packed. And I'll tell you what, you're going to see some action in this before it's over, too. This thing won't lull you to sleep. Believe me, it'll be a terrific night of boxing because the Ricardo Lopez, Alia Villamore, promises to be a tremendous fight, too, in the strawweight division. And then comes Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson. And you won't believe the way the Brits come to a boxing match. They came 7,000 strong. Some 12,000 miles across the big pond. That's the Atlantic Ocean for yes, people in the Pacific. And uh, it may not be big to you, but it's a Break long haul up. from England all the way to Las Vegas, Nevada. see the fight just continues to unfold the way it's been going throughout every once in a while cup caster will Michael, catch Michael, him with Michael, a Michael. pretty good counter punch but it's uh, really more or less Michael Carvajal dictating Although, uh, Castro looks better right now than he has in a while he's willing to mix it up he puts his head down a lot when he comes in and I like to see Carvajal counter that with an uppercut if he catches this guy with an uppercut he's gonna hurt him instead he stays upstairs Michael has got to I would say when this kid comes in Go with the jab and come with a right uppercut. Let it fly and throw it right from the hip because he'll duck when you throw the left hand out. He'll put his head right down and his chin down and then let that other hand. Just see what he did right there? He did it a little bit, but not as much as I'd like to see him doing. Let it go right from the hip. And if I get Michael over here by the ropes, I'll tell him exactly what he should do. And if he does it, he'll win the fight in uh, short order. Because Cobb Castro is tailor-made for an uppercut right now. Lego, Lego, and all Lego. you have to do is put the left in his face and watch him duck his chin. Watch every time the left goes in there. See the chin go down? Watch this. Watch this. Now, see, faint. That time he fainted. Now, that time he didn't do it. Now, naturally, when I would want him to do it, he won't do it. But ordinarily, he, he uh, ducks his chin and he brings it in, which isn't a bad idea, by the way. But you got to keep your eyes up so you can see the guy. Lego, Lego. your chin is fine, but you want to keep your eyes up. He takes oh, his whole head and bends it over. And if Michael's corner picks it up, wow, what an uppercut he's going to end this fight with. Closing seconds of the sixth round. Carball just totally dictating the pace. This is the bell ending six. All right, we're back live. We're in the seventh round, approaching the second half of the fight here now. Melchor Cobb Castro, the pride of China in Campeche in Mexico, trying to do the best he can against a, a game Michael, Michael. Michael Cabajal. Michael 39 and 2, 25 KOs. Cobb Castro 45 and 4 with 19 KOs. Again, Cobb Castro actually has more experience. 431 rounds in comparison to 263 for Cabajal, but in world title fights, it's Cabajal that has the big end. Nice, nice uppercut. Yes, somebody did tell Michael, whack him with an uppercut. Danny or Angel uh, Carbajal must have picked that up because it's so obvious. It uh, really uh, is a situation where uh, Carbajal can take tremendous advantage of that if he will go to the uppercut. We're halfway through the seventh round of this scheduled 12-round uh, championship fight here. Melcher, Cobb, Castro, and uh, Michael Carbajal doing battle. Carbajal in the white trunks. Cobb, Castro in the blue. Break. Stop, stop, stop. Don't hold, don't hold, don't hold. And you see Jay Nady say, hey, you're don't not going to hit and hold here. You know what's amazing is I look in there, Jay Nady looks like a giant compared to these two guys. <laughs> Jay's a good sized guy. These, these guys are little. 5'2 five, and 5'5 five, five and a half for Michael Carbajal. And Jay's probably about a six footer. Nice shot that time. Carbajal could clip with a pretty good left hand. And that's the power hand. It didn't seem to hurt him any. A blink his eyes. I just get the idea that at any moment Carbajal is going to pick up the pace here. And uh, when you do, you kind of ignite this kid. Uh, I mentioned before that a lot of the Mexican fighters uh, are kind of like uh, the Puerto Rican great champion Felix Tito Trinidad. When he gets hit, it's like an adrenaline burst rushes through him and he, he really gets fiery. The same thing happens to Cobb Castro. Castro is now controlling this round, by the way. This is his best round of the fight. Cabal 
it bounced back pretty good that time. I've had a couple of even rounds for Castro, but uh, other than that, Carvajal has controlled the pace of this fight. And uh, Castro having his best round here in the seventh. And that was his idea to drag Carvajal into the late rounds and then outbox him. And if this is his strategy, it's working because this is a turnaround round for Break. Cub Castro. He gets this round of Mike's scorecard. And on the Money Graham round counter, we're coming up to the end of round seven. All right, here we go. Round number eight. As we uh, get going here for the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. Again, that's the 108 pound division. I'm Bob Sheridan. We're coming to you live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, where little Melchor Cup Castro of China and Campeche in Mexico is trying to win the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship from Michael Cabajal. Cabajal controlled the early going in the fight, and then in round seven, Castro grabbed this first go, round go, of the go, fight, stop, stop, and all he has to do with the strategy that he set up for this fight is continue to outbox Cabajal, and he's actually landing more flush and better shots on uh, Cabajal right now than Cabajal is on him. Cabajal needs a fire under his uh, rump. He needs to get going. He's just not doing the job right now, and as I say that, he goes, wow, that left hand that whistles past the ear of Cobb Castro. Castro and Drew, Cabajal, you see the nice movement of Castro? While left hand grazes the nose, the air catches the nose off right. And again, there's a reach advantage, uh, 65 inches, 65 and a half actually to 61. That's four and a half inches that uh, Cobb Cat is giving Mike. away. Yet he does a better job inside than Break. does Cabo Hall. Right now he's beating Cabo Hall to the punch inside. And that's going to be key as we wind down for the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th round. In the early going of this fight, I thought that there probably would be a quick ending to this fight in that uh, somebody would get clipped with uh, the power. Uh, and to be honest, I was expecting the Cabal's power was far superior to Cobb Castro's. And the way Castro has shown movement, Cabal hasn't been able to take advantage of his power. It's not really that Cabal doesn't have power. It's more that Castro's fight plan is working for him. And you see how wild he is sometimes with those wild shots with the left hand and that's his power hand in the south block. he comes with the uppercut he's landing punches at different angles he's throwing right hands but the back he throws the left catches Cabal. see him beating him to the punch we began noticing that in the last round and this again has caught castro's round at this point let go, let go. inside it's castro's heel all the way what he's doing is smothering the punches. He, this, he doesn't want to be here. This is not a good place to be. He's got to get inside those long arms. You see, that's why he stays outside. That's why it doesn't look like a great fight from where you are. But he lured him in that time and nailed him with the left hand. Now he realizes he can hurt him, and he really chases after him. You notice that it's all Cub Castro, the aggressor now. Cabajal backing up. Cabajal wants to mix and do something, but this kid's movement is causing so many problems. See that? He continues to score. Even the jab, only one jab gets through there by Carbohol and the aggressor now is the little guy. All right, the bell ends round number eight. Another good Cut Castro round is second in a row. Hey, here comes Frank Bruno. Let's listen up and hear Frank's entrance as he comes to the arena. Frank uh, is just a real consummate gentleman. Tremendous cut shape. When you see his body when he takes his uh, jersey off been wonderful to us all week the British flag handling here and it's going to be very very exciting before it's all over look at the Frank Bruno signs very rarely do you see an American fighter in his home country not have the edge in the crowd it's so rare here but the Brits uh, are used to following their football teams and their soccer teams and all of their other teams cricket and whatever else they play in that strange part of the world uh, they follow and boxing is one thing that they've 
really thirsted for for years trying to get a heavyweight champion that meant something uh, and they have one now because Frank Bruno is the most popular athlete in fact I heard uh, recently Barry McGuigan talking because he's an Irishman and the worst one to judge the royal family I suppose but he said that uh, Frank Bruno is more popular than the Queen well we won't say that because the royal family's taking legs and we don't like to whack them on that down even though it is the eve of St. Patrick's Day and they should be whacked okay here we go the ninth round of a scheduled 12-round affair here with the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. Michael Carbajal in the white trunks. And he's trying to take back the supremacy that he expressed for the first six. And it could be tough for Carbajal if he allows Cub Castro to take this uh, is a very important round for him. He doesn't want the Castro to just waltz through these last three rounds, and he's trying to be more assertive here in round uh, number nine. By the way, on my scorecard now, with Cut Castro winning the last two rounds, I have only two points separating the fight of my go, scorecard. Go, go I did score two rounds even that the judges could have leaned one way or the other, which would have this fight dead even, or Carvajal a little bit more out in front than what I have on my scorecard. So think about that when uh, we get through this ninth round with three to go. Nobody's really established themselves as the championship is there for the taking. Either one of these guys can walk away with his 108-pound junior flyweight championship belt. Very tough fighter for the two fighters, not the crowd pleaser by any stretch of the imagination. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think either fighter cares about pleasing the crowd. They want to win this go championship. Hold it, go, hold it, a lot of money to let go, let go. each individual fighter. It's it's uh, Cub Castro doing a little thing, but somebody does get hit. Uh, in spite of the fact it's a lackluster fight, it's him. It's Castro that's doing it now. You see him doing the little things, ducking under the shots, making uh, the former champion Carbajal miss, making him back off, landing more punches when they come together. States, big American basketball fan of the Los Angeles Lakers of the. American National Basketball Association. All right, this is round number 10. It's scheduled for 12. A fight that hasn't really electrified the crowd, but there's a hopeful anticipation, electricity feeling in the crowd tonight as they wait for Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson. But what they don't know is they're going to get juiced and juiced real well when they see Christy Martin make her entrance out here. This crowd will immediately come to life. And wherever you're watching, maybe you're watching at the airport Hilton in Boston, Massachusetts with my friend Annie. I hope you're all enjoying it there. And I'll tell you before it's all over, this will be a night to behold. So turn that sound up. The Colonel from Withrop is talking to you. And all my friends in Shannon, Ireland on the Hill Road watching on St. Patrick Eve, I'm sure you're all cranked up there in Brandon's Pub and Six Mile Bridge. Go up to the farm and check on my cattle, will you boys? Meanwhile, I'll tell you what's going on here. Cabo Hall and Cobb Castro doing battle, and it's Cobb Castro making his comeback really strong. He's taken the last two or three rounds here in my scorecard. Cabo Hall trying to execute, and instead, he's in the process of being executed because Cobb Castro is really beating him to the punch now. When I say really, it's nothing that's bringing the crowd to its feet, but in terms of really on my scorecard, he's doing it. And if the judges see it anywhere near the way I do, there's one or two things if they don't see it the way I do, either they need a German Shepherd, or perhaps some judges should not be at ringside, or maybe boxing isn't the exact science that we think it is. And of course, it can also prove that the same people can look at the same thing and not see the same thing which we've all seen in boxing so many times nonetheless this is the 10th round and what is becoming a very close fight here for both of these guys who would like to walk home with a belt buckle around their tiny little waists and maybe that's why I'm negative because you know my waist is up around 60 and these guys together don't have a 60 inch waist <laughs> 
That's a fact. <laughs> this is the 10th round of a scheduled 12 round affair for the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World, the 108 pound division. We're coming to you from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. The principals Cub Castro and Michael Carvajal. Carvajal to the right of your screen with 19 seconds to go in the 10th. Remember, this is a 12 round world championship fight. And unusual for the little guys not to put on a better show. But again, the strategy of this fight is so difficult and so close. It's not making for a crowd pleaser, but it's a, a better fight for the guys that are in it anyway. It's kind of like St. Patrick's Irish holiday. Woo! The excitement here continues to mount. Time, time. Too much on your eye. Too much on the here. Mike, Mike, stand over that corner. Too much. All right, you see there, round 11. Too much. Too much passing. Thank you. Time in. Somebody Go has got to get going here, and if they want this title, they've got to really. Turn it up a notch and somebody's got to take it. Right now, uh, it's there for the taking. Either guy can take this thing. I've got the fight dead even on my scorecard now, 96-96. I've given the last four rounds to Cobb Castro. The fight turned around in the seventh. It was mostly Carbajal in the early going, and Castro, to me, has looked better in the late going. And again, if they could bounce over here, I'd give some instruction to Carbajal because if he, for one, doesn't turn it up a notch, he's not going to get the title tonight. As little Cobb Castro has been coming on, you see the way he pounded behind the elbow there? I don't know if Michael needs to get going. And if Michael Carbajal doesn't get going, he's not going to win the title tonight. He's got to pick up the pace. Carbajal has got to pick up the pace or he's going to give this title away. Eddie Schuyler from the Associated Press yelling he doesn't have a title and if he continues to fight like this he won't have a title. I'll tell you that. Is Carbajal having a little bit uh, better ability and landing punches here now taking advantage of that reach but look at the little guy smother inside body shots wow with the left hand trying to line up that body shot that'll hurt him he hasn't been able to hurt him at all neither guy's been down nobody visibly shaken a little bit of puffiness around the eyes of Cub Castro Nice shot that time with the right hand. No damage done at all, though. No power with Cobb Castro at all. When they shape of the uh, features of uh, certain Mexican fighters, they have those high cheekbones from the, uh, I suppose, from the heritage of the Incas and other Indian tribes uh, down in Mexico, and they have a tendency to if they have that type of appearance and facial structure and bone structure in their face, the cheeks will swell up and it's really Michael, not Michael. indicative of the fact that he's getting beat up too much. It's just that he's been in a bit of a war. The Carvajal, who's of uh, Latin descent as well, doesn't have that same facial structure. Lego, Lego, Lego. But it doesn't show uh, Stop, so well. Break. Stop. Are we this is one of those rounds that uh, different judges could see differently. How do you score this one? How do you feel when you're watching? I get it about even, but I think that the, the aggressor has definitely been uh, scored in this round. That guy could win the fight. Here we go, the 12th round. The IBF Vacant Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. Bob Sheridan here from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hope you're enjoying it. Again, we won't uh, try to pretend that it's a big crowd pleaser for our opening fight because it just plainly isn't a great uh, crowd pleaser. But these two guys are working very nice left uh -oh, uh -oh. hand as our doggy got through there to the head of Cabo Hall. Cabo Hall, both guys realize they need a big finishing round. Both of these guys possess the immeasurable quality, the heart of a champion. Who's got the bigger one? Who knows? But it's Castro throwing more leather right now. As I say that, Cabo Hall counters. Fairly even round. Both guys need to attack. Carvajal really needs to juice it up and take it up for the end of this fight if he wants to win this fight. You know where you, uh, your kid in the schoolyard used to fight in the second grade or the 11th grade or something like that? And a 
fight went on like this all afternoon, you wouldn't say there was any winner. Well, that's about how it is. It's that close. At least on my score. Nobody's been hurt. Nobody's shaken. Nobody down. Nobody cut. And both guys throwing quite a few punches at different times. Nice straight right hand by Cabal. And you see the wild shots by Castro. And every once in a while they land. Castro has been more effective in spite of the fact he's so short and giving away all that uh, several inches in reach, four and a half inches to be exact. He's landing all the punches inside. He's done a nice job working his way in. The reason for that is the total movement, the, the whole package that he has presented to Carvajal. If a game plan worked in the fight, I'd say Castro was much more successful than Carvajal. Carvajal's I can't figure at all. A lack of aggressiveness in the fight, for one thing, although he was aggressive in the first six rounds, so I don't know if that's a fair comment. You people can judge this as well as I can. And Carvajal much more aggressive in the early going. Michael, Michael, I think Carvajal is aggressiveness in this round is more effective than is uh, Castro. Castro is still aggressive, but it's Carvajal more effective in this round, I believe, at this stage. But it's been sort of that way in a lot of rounds, seesawing back and forth. Last 36 seconds of the fight now. Both guys working extremely hard. They both know they need this last round. And again, this is another one of those fairly even rounds. If you sit on one side of the ring, one judge can see it one way. On the other side, another judge can see it another way. And who can argue with it? Great. The people that are watching the Bond Network across the United States argue it out. Inside of eight seconds to go in this fight. There'll be no knockout. And this one's over. I've got the fight scored dead even. It could be a draw. Depends on how the judges see it. I've got it 115-115 in my scorecard, and that would be just because, in my opinion, nobody really won that fight. Really it's a fight that needs a 15-round affair, really perhaps, and it's the type of fight that could probably go 20 rounds before there was a definitive winner. See just how the judges saw this uh, thing. Here's Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Bill Graham scores the bout 115 to 113. Judge Tom McDonough scores the bout 117 to 111. And Dave Moretti sees the bout at 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner of the vacant IBF Junior Flyweight title, Michael One seventeen to one eleven and one sixteen to one twelve. So one judge saw it about the way I did. The other guys had it a little bit further apart. But there he is, the brand new IBF Junior Flyweight Champion of the World. All right.